Hey, my name is Will. I play a lot of different games, but one thing I enjoy doing is going back and experiencing games that I may have missed out on. In this video, I'm going to share the experience of my very first time playing a Sonic game properly. Though, it's probably not the one you would expect. I'm going to be checking out Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Master System. A console that wasn't as popular as the Genesis or Mega Drive, whatever you want to call it, but honestly had some pretty great games. So kick back, relax, and let me share with you the time I played Sonic the Hedgehog for the first time. Okay, first up, a little bit about me. So, I'm a 90s kid. The consoles I grew up with were the NES and the Super Nintendo. I would not be able to quantify just how many hours I sunk into the original Super Mario Bros. trilogy. I honestly can't remember a time in my life where I wasn't playing games. When it came to Sega consoles, I had very few experiences with them. The only experiences I can remember is playing non-Sonic games on the Mega Drive at a friend's house. There are some very early memories that I barely remember of my cousin owning another Sega console with some games that had boxes with a white checkered pattern. I don't really remember much about the games he owned, but I do remember one of the boxes having Sonic on it. The only other time I came across a Sonic game was later on when we had a PS2 and my younger brothers were gifted Sonic Heroes one year. However, I didn't really play that game at the time because I was more into the Wii and the PC games I was buying. So yeah, that's how little I've experienced of Sonic the Hedgehog. Anyway, over on my Twitch stream, from time to time I would get told that I should really check out the series. So, since I like playing retro games, I decided to go find a copy of the game for the Sega Master System. It turns out those white boxes I remember my cousin having were games for that console. The Sega Master System was a console that was competing with the NES. It's a console that didn't really do too well in North America, but it had better success in Europe and Brazil. And since Australia gets lumped in with Europe when it comes to video games, it did pretty well here too. Before playing Sonic on stream, I started digging into the library of Sega Master System games and found some of them to be pretty cool looking. There were a few games where I thought, oh wow, these graphics are much better than the NES. So I was pretty excited to start taking a look at some of these games in depth. So in my mind, I thought playing the Master System version of Sonic the Hedgehog instead of the Genesis version would be like playing the NES version of Super Mario Bros. 3 instead of the Super Nintendo version that was featured in Mario All-Stars. Uh, turns out that wasn't the case. So when it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog, the Master System version is its own thing. It's a different game to what you play on the Genesis. So trust me to pick the version of the game that wasn't as well known. For those of you that had a Game Gear, the Game Gear version of Sonic the Hedgehog was based off the Master System version. Anyway, let's start with first impressions. My first impression of the game was pretty positive. Since I grew up with the NES, the thing that stood out to me the most was just how vibrant the colors were in this game. I mean, sure, the NES has its share of games with vibrant colors, but some of the games I owned growing up tended to have murky colors. So it was great to see something this bright. The music as well was really good. Again, since I'm drawing comparisons to the NES, the sound also felt very cheery and was something that I really enjoyed because it was different and, at the same time, familiar. Some of the music tracks in this game are a jam, honestly. So, how did a seasoned Mario player fare in Sonic the Hedgehog for the first time? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Not well. The thing that I think took the longest for me to get used to is the fact that Sonic has more realistic running than Mario. Man. All I can say is muscle memory is a bitch. A lot of the times I died early on had to do with overshooting platforms or my jumps just having bad timing. At times it felt like every stage was like an ice stage from Mario. I'm honestly curious if people who grew up with Sonic games would stumble in a Mario game the same way I did in Sonic. It would certainly make me feel better, that's for sure. After a bit of adjusting, I did get better at the game, and was not stumbling around like someone who had never played a game in their whole life. So now let's talk about what sets this game apart from its Genesis brethren. Aside from the obvious being the fact that the levels are different, the Master System version of the game has Chaos Emeralds being collectibles that you just find hidden somewhere in the stage. Instead of having to play a bonus stage to earn one, you simply have to find the secret spot it's hidden in the bonus stages instead become a way to earn more lives and continues. Which, honestly, I'm a fan of this. It lines up with the games that I used to play as a kid. Over the years, I've watched various people play the Genesis version of the game, so I am aware of the bonus stages and the frustrations it can cause new players who are trying to get the best ending. The first area was overall a pretty chill experience, 
The area boss is what you would expect from an introductory boss, so nothing too complicated here. So I got through this pretty smoothly. But now we come to where things started getting tricky for me. The bridge stage. So this stage is an auto-scroller, nothing new to me here, but it highlighted a common issue with this game, and that issue is the camera. In this stage, and others, there are sections where it's hard to gauge what the surroundings are because the camera is placed too high up, and you have to manually pan the camera down to see where it's safe to jump. It leads to a lot of blind leaps of faith. Another mentality that was really hard to get out of was the whole meme of gotta go fast. This stage pretty much solidified that that really wasn't the right mentality. It's true, you can barrel through stages, but I found that more often than not, going as fast as possible was a liability. Combine this with not being used to Sonic's movements, every stage just feels like a nice stage at that point. The bridge stage was a struggle initially, but it did let me get used to the idea that I didn't need to go super fast all the time, so I did end up getting a better understanding of how Sonic controlled. Oh, and since I did die a bunch of times here, let's talk about the other thing that's different from the Genesis version. With Sonic games, I'm at the very least aware that Sonic collects rings and the rings act as a safety net. If you take a hit, you lose your rings, but you have a chance to recover a few and reclaim that safety net. In this game, yeah, that's not a thing. If you get hit, you lose all your rings, no recovery. Also in the Genesis version, bosses are typically at the end of a stage where you've had a chance to accumulate some rings as a safety net. The boss encounters here are their own separate stage, and these stages do not contain any rings at all. Not having any rings at boss encounters means you have to perfect the fight and not take any damage at all. So in the moment, this did feel a bit frustrating as there were times where I was trying to figure out the attack pattern only to die right away. But I think when everything was said and done, I kind of enjoyed it. It made me learn how to fight the bosses, and it was super satisfying to beat them and say I did it without taking damage. Well, except for one fight. But more on that later. Next in line is the jungle zone. The jungle zone is probably the nicest looking set of stages in the entire game, with really bright colors. The water here especially looks great. I realized very early on that in order to have any chance of finishing this game, I would need all the lives and continues I could get. So early on in this first jungle stage, there's a one-up on a platform, and my first thought was, okay, I have to get this. So let's watch me try to get this one-up. Do I just need to, like, have that much of a run-up and just... Come on. Alright, that much of a run-up. Let's go. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose so many lives trying to get this. I'm going at full speed. Get it! <laughs> Am I being an... Oh, oh okay. <sighs> yep. Good. Oh, no, I love the part where everyone thinks I'm a moron now. What's that? Obligatory early 90s video game f*** you moment? Check. These stages are full of these moments. Between leaps of faith and logs that you ride downwards to doom because the log you need to jump to is slightly out of sync. What do you mean? But hey, running over the water was pretty neat. The next stage in the jungle zone is a vertical platforming stage. So this stage definitely fits in with the era of early 90s games. You keep climbing higher and higher, and as the screen scrolls up, whatever is below the fold becomes death. There were a lot of times that I fell victim to not being used to Sonic's movements and ended up dying. At this point I was saying that Sonic had shoes made out of ice, so I'm probably going to call it that from now on. It took me a couple of game overs to finally be able to clear this zone. The boss for this zone involved a lot of dodging, and again, I fell victim to the ice shoes more often than I would like to admit. Okay, so next up is the obligatory water level. These stages were so stressful. So again, since I have seen people play bits and pieces of the Genesis version of the game, I was aware that Sonic doesn't swim, and instead you have to try not to drown by collecting air. But watching and playing are two completely different things. Words cannot describe how stressful these stages were. Sonic moves slowly in the water, and then the countdown begins, which may as well have been a countdown to an explosion. Wait, doesn't work? Yeah. No, that's air! Oh god. 
checkpoint, please! Got it. Oh! 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 Oh my god. There were so many times where it was like this, just barely making it in time to get air. But as stressful as all this was, I did pretty well in this zone compared to the jungle zone. I did have to eat a game over to get through it, but by the time I got back up to where I was, I think I finally hit my stride in terms of being able to control Sonic's movements. The strangest thing about this area was the boss fight. Since the previous stages I was so used to having to juggle an air supply, I was fully expecting that to be the case here, but weirdly, it wasn't. I mean, I guess this fight would have been nightmarish otherwise. Maybe it's best not to think about that reality. The next zone is the Scrap Brain, which I think has my favourite music track from the whole game. But the zone itself is a bit of an odd one. The stages were giving me Mega Man vibes, which was great, but the stages were pretty short and some of the sections were just navigating a maze with not a whole lot going on. I guess this zone was designed to be just a bit of an intermission, as even when you get up to Eggman, he just runs away. And yeah, that's, that's the end of the zone. But what comes next is the opposite. This zone has a lot going on, with the first stage being a stage about dodging electricity and timing jumps. Oh, and there are these cannons that constantly shoot at you with no way of damaging them. The whole stage is a gauntlet, and I did eat a few deaths here and there, but I did manage to get through it. So, I was feeling pretty confident. It felt like the game was coming to a close, and I had a few continues, so this was looking pretty good. But then we get up to the finale of this game. So first up is the airship. At the start of the stage, I needed to dodge a bunch of cannons shooting at Sonic, which took a few attempts. Once this section was clear, there are these spikes that force you to start moving to the right. And as you're trying to run away, the game puts this little bomb in the way that will 100% cause anyone experiencing this for the first time to die a couple of times. The play here is not to go fast, and perfectly position yourself so the shrapnel from the explosion doesn't hit you. So finally I got past this cheeky bomb, only to come to what seemed like a dead end. There was something that looked like a door, but when I went to try and interact with it, nothing happened. So I was really confused because it looked like I had reached a dead end. The edge of the map just felt like a pit into death. So I thought, okay, maybe I did something wrong, so I decided to try it all again. But after doing this section a second time, it didn't make things any clearer. So, guess what the answer here is? It's to jump into the abyss because the chain is something you can walk on. I felt a bit dumb, but hey, if you've ever played any games from this era, this sort of thing wasn't uncommon. Once you get past a few cannons, the stage is over and you come to the grand finale of the game. The final showdown with Eggman. So Eggman is in a glass tube, jumping up and down on the bottom. When he does, a ball of energy flies at you like a heat-seeking missile. There's also these square-looking things that move up and down the screen and shoot an electric bolt periodically. All you have to do is bash Sonic against the tube to damage it. For the first couple of minutes, I was feeling pretty confident. The pattern was pretty straightforward and things were going well. Well, that was at least until the second phase. Okay, I say a second phase, but what I really mean is change of attack pattern. After a certain number of hits, all of a sudden the pattern becomes super erratic and hard to predict. I was dying a lot, so I decided to just sit and wait and see what this new timing was, and for the life of me I, I couldn't figure it out. The electric bolt just seemed to be going off randomly. I stood perfectly still for ages waiting for something to happen, but then the moment I would go hit the tube, BAM! The electricity would zap me. Up until this point I had been doing pretty well and had multiple continues, so I was only a little bit worried. The ball of energy you could at least predict because you could see the energy building up before it got released, but the bolt of electricity? It wasn't telegraphed at all and just seemed to go off randomly. I lost all my lives, and then my continues were wasted one by one until there was nothing left. I felt pretty crushed. But then I thought to myself, what if it's one of those games? There are games from this era that had certain sections that were just brutal. The one thing that came to mind was the final fight from the first Castlevania game for the NES. Basically that fight involves a scenario where the final boss just has way too much health to be able to fight reasonably. So most people resort to a particular cheese tactic to be able to complete the game. I decided to give it one more go and run through the game again. Up until this point I had found all the Chaos Emeralds except for two. So to make the most of this run, I decided to look up where the final two were so that I could at least get the best ending after all this effort. And boy was I glad that I did. One of the emeralds is in a spot that involves falling into a pit that I probably never would have discovered naturally. There's no real indicator here that you can safely fall down. This is one of those things that you would have had to have called a hotline for or read in a magazine as a pro tip. 
Anyway, I went through all the levels again, and at this point, I was pretty decent at the game. I got up to the final boss again with more than 10 lives and 5 continues. But once again, I got completely destroyed. It's at this point that I said to chat, Okay, I need to find a strategy. So as I'm looking at the guide that pointed me in the right direction of the two Chaos Emeralds, I noticed something. The guide that I was following said it was for the Game Gear version of the game. But everything the guide talked about lined up perfectly with the Master System version of the game, so I figured both must be identical. Well, turns out they are, except for one detail. The final fight. What you're seeing now is the final fight from the Game Gear version. The energy ball isn't heat-seeking, it travels in a set path, and on the ground you just have to avoid the fire that moves in a set pattern with timing you can learn. Holy crap. It was pretty late at night at this point, and this revelation just left me speechless. It was now clear that this boss was going to be one of those final fights. I decided to wrap things up and try again the next day, because I was honestly just wrecked. But before going live, I decided to have a look around and see if I could find some advice for this fight. A lot of the advice was just go fast, which I wasn't sure was a meme or genuinely the way to beat it. But finally I found some advice which simply said, count to two, then go. I fired up the stream, ran through the game, and before I knew it, I was up to the final boss again. When the time came, I counted to two and then dodged. And just on the first life, I managed to get further than all the attempts from the previous night. This was definitely the way to go. And sure enough, on the very next life, One, two, 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 one, two. Yes! And with that, I had finally completed my first Sonic game. Feels good, man. So yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog on the Master System is a lot of fun. Sure, it has things about it that feel a little bit jank, but you can't really fault it too much because it's just a product of the era it's from. It really is a nice looking game with a lot of great music and levels. Just be sure to count the two in the final fight. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed me sharing my experience with this game. Hopefully this video has made you want to go play through it again, or maybe for the first time if you two are discovering older games. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video, as it'll let me know to do more of this content. This has definitely piqued my interest in trying some of the other games in the series, and also checking out more Master System games. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is hit that old like button. Or if you want to see my full playthrough of the game and more, be sure to check out my stream archive channel. I'm also live on Twitch most nights, Australian time, if you ever want to catch me live. Anyway, that's it from me. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.